Hello and welcome to Machine Learning for Biomedical Data, an introductory course to applied high throughput data analysis. This course is brought to you by the Georgetown Medical Center in collaboration with Pine Biotech, a company specializing in big biomedical data analysis. In this lecture, we will be learning about high throughput biomedical data, what it is, where it came from, and where we can find it to analyze and prepare for machine learning. Medical data, or simply clinical data, is the type of information that we have been using in clinical use for centuries. Temperature, heart rate, and other data that is on the surface. But with the advent of cellular and molecular biology, we've learned how health and disease are driven by what's happening deeper, at the cellular level. Biomedical data refers to the combination of clinical and omics data, or the information about the underlying biology, which has several layers of omics. These include genomics, proteomics, and even the microbiome. These omics data types are high throughput. This means that they produce a large quantity of observations for each sample. Phenomics refers to phenotype, how cells look, their shape, and types. Genomics refers to the DNA sequence that contains single nucleotide polymorphisms and other variation at the DNA level. Epigenomics refers to epigenetic variation like histone modification and methylation. Transcriptomics can, data contains information on gene expression and its variation like alternative splicing. There are other omics as well that represent different levels of data that all contribute to a single puzzle. But how did this data become so widely accessible? After all, it's very expensive to produce and untrivial to use. Let's see the amazing speed at which one of these data types, genomics, became widely accessible and commonly used in biomedical research and even clinical practice throughout the world. In the 1950s and 60s, the structure and function of DNA was discovered. It took almost 50 years for that knowledge to be used to sequence the human genome that was completed in 2003. Today, Francis Collins, who led the Human Genome Project, is the director of National Institutes of Health, and his main competitor at that time, Craig Venter, recently co-founded one of his many startups, Human Longevity. This company seeks to extend human life using clues found in multi-omics data. In 2006, Illumina was launched, bringing shotgun sequencing to the masses. In 2015, the 1000 Genome Project brought a significant number of whole genome sequences to the research community. And today, in 2018, over 100,000 whole genomes were sequenced at the Broad Institute and over 50,000 genomes at Genomics England. The growth in high throughput data is largely driven by cheaper, faster, and more efficient sequencing called next generation sequencing, or simply NGS, from 100 million in 2001 to approximately 3 million in 2008. And today, the cost of a sequenced genome is about $1,000. Why is the price such a good parameter to assess the availability of genomic data? It is because other standard medical tests, on average, cost between $250 and $800. The widespread use of these technologies gives us a benchmark to assess the prevalence and accessibility of genomic data for clinical and biomedical research uses. So we address the question of cost. That was primarily driven by research advances and a gradual transition to effective technologies that were quickly scaled up. The second issue is the use of this data. How do you analyze such a rich data set? Many measurements yield single numbers of each observation. For example, height in inches or centimeters, weight in pounds or kilograms, and age in years. Using such numbers, you can learn something, but the detail and depth of that information is limited. It is also intuitive. The here on the chart, we can see a clear separation in two dimensions, weight projection, projected on the y-axis and height on the x-axis. A straight line separates between male and female patients. 
Omics, on the other hand, yields tens of thousands of data points for each sample. Each element, let's say a gene, will have a number associated with its ex expression. There are approximately 20,000 protein coding genes in the human genome. So to work with such high throughput data, one must rely on methods that can handle this kind of complexity. So it's not surprising that at the same time that the human genome was sequenced, we can see a dramatic increase in machine learning publications and patents. Machine learning methods are used to process, analyze, visualize, and integrate these high throughput datasets. Availability of data, development of new tools, and computing power making it, make it essential for us to understand current state of the art in biomedical data analysis. So let's begin by identifying tools and datasets that we will use in our course. In our course, we'll be relying on the T-BioInfo multi-omics analysis platform that provides a user-friendly interface for analysis, visualization, and integration of omics data. The platform is designed for both newbies and experts, providing advanced high-performance computing capabilities and a combination of proprietary and open source tools. For analysis, we will use public domain datasets from NCBI, the National Center for Biotechnology Information. I already told you that we will be learning by working through projects, so let's get started. The first dataset will focus on cancer. To give you a statistic, 1.6 million people die from cancer every year in the U.S. alone. 10 to 20 percent of these deaths are estimated to be from misdiagnosis or delayed diagnosis. So the first dataset that we will use actually showcases how machine learning can be applied to multi-omics oncology data. The publication is interesting because the authors assembled the dataset of about 50 different breast cancer cell lines that represent the whole spectrum of breast cancer variations. The cell lines have genomic, transcriptomic, and proteomic data, as well as an efficacy measurement of commonly used and experimental cancer drugs. For our next lecture, please spend some time reading through the publication. You can find it on this link. I hope to see you in our next lecture, where we will discuss the processing of high throughput data. We will also review the data we have, so make sure you are familiar with the publication so you can follow along.